In today's video, we're going to be talking about Ant-Man 3, aka Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. So, it will be the full plot leak. Going over it, telling you what parts are true, what parts are real. Now, we basically know the plot leak is real. Why? Because we had the dialogue leak, which told us even more details. So, this could end up being a decently length video. So, it is spoiler-based, but I will tell you when we're going into spoilers, which is basically going to be after the intro. So if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel DC pop culture based content that we try to deliver on a daily basis. If you could subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on to never miss any of the videos. If you're so good, check us out on Instagram at WarStew to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice. I would love to hit 30,000 followers over there, but it is what it is. And also if you could check us out on Twitter, Washed UG because apparently I've got no clout over there, but yeah, it is my sportist platform. So if you could follow us on Twitter, Washed UG, that would be much appreciated. So let's get into this video. So, full spoilers ahead, we're going to talk about Ant Man 3, aka Ant Man the Wasp Quantum Mania. Now, something that actually happened in the last 24 hours, I don't actually know why Marvel keeps doing this, but I can see why they're doing it. They're trying to really hype train the movie. I don't really understand why studios do this. Is they start to release footage from the beginning of the movie. A first clip from Ant-Man 3 release footage drops on the internet. I would try and put it in this video, but I don't think it will allow me. But it is actually on YouTube. So in this clip, we see Scott Lang, Hope Van Dyne. And Cassie Lang, they're all in the car together. Kind of cute, to be honest. Cassie has a little dig after Scott finds out she's got her own suit. And she's like, yeah, I know how to look after myself. I've done it for long enough. Obviously, because Scott was blimped away. It's kind of like a dig at him. And it's all about familiar. It's all about Scott Lang just wanting to be a father. And in this clip, we actually see him listening to his own audiobook of his real book that you can now buy on the internet it's actually a real book and in this moment all i could think was how did the hulk turn me into a baby will i be a baby forever am i the hulk's baby it will have some comedic value in it but we know this is going to be the most serious marvel movie we've had in such a long time because outside of uh, doctor strange 2 it's pretty much been jokes since then i mean thor love and thunder the freaking hell is going on there but you can actually buy this autobiography for real which is very weird, but it's actually pretty cool. So let's go over the full plot leak and add context and add, add points here and there from the dialogue leak as well. So let's break it down. So at the start of the movie, Janet will meet Kang in the quantum realm. So it says, there's a montage of Scott narrating his life via a part from his book, looking out for the little guy, which you can actually buy for real, which is very weird. Scott talks about how happy he was to meet a talking raccoon and says he's friends with the Hulk. This is reaffirmed by the clip they release when we literally hear him talking about how he met the Hulk in an audio book. It's kind of weird he's listening to his own audio book, but kind of funny at the same time. I think it will have comedic tones throughout, but not really because people will actually get hurt in this movie, potentially. Potentially. Talking about future adventures, Scott says that for a moment he just focused on being a dad. And that's all he wants to be, and that's how Kang is going to manipulate him to get time back. But we all know Kang's true master plan. So a big focus point of this movie is Scott and Cassie reconnecting. It's a huge part of this movie. Scott, Cassie, Hope, Hank, Janet are separated into two different groups after getting sucked into the quantum realm via Cassie's device. This has been seen in literally every trailer and most of the information we're going over today has been seen via every trailer, every TV spot. They're even going to drop a Super Bowl spot. They really want people to know about this movie and what a better way than to drop it at the Super Bowl, the most expensive place you can advertise a movie crazy super bowl trailers up to 30 seconds will cost close to seven million dollars for 30 seconds which is freaking insane scott tries to calm cassie down by saying being in the quantum realm is just like camping this is literally in the trailer and this information came out quite a while ago we see a whole civilization living in the quantum realm we see hank and janet surfing giants flying stingrays again in the trailer there's a quantum realm cantina bar with a bug man a bartender bill murray kryler 
is in the quantum realm, who is hinted to have a fling with Janet whilst she was stuck in there. Some buildings appear to be alive in the quantum realm, which again we've seen in the trailers. Modok described as a mechanic organism designed only for killing. He is a big Cory Soul head. Again, confirmed in the trailer. We get to know Kang's backstory in great detail. We've already pretty much got one of the Kang's backstory, Nathaniel, he who remains. Janet and Kang were both trapped in the quantum realm together in the past. He has a ship that can travel the multiverse. Janet and he were fixing it. It. He wanted to help her fix time so she could get time back with hope. Now, we know pretty much everything. Kevin Feige has confirmed that the whole plan for Kang is to manipulate the Ant family to get the multiversal traveling ship working again. Essentially, what he's going to steal is the energy source. So, said Kang can actually do this. And it's worth saying this information came out over three months ago. It's just fascinating. It's almost like Marvel wants this information out there, like they've got a big master plan, something that's going to pop up that no one knows anything about. I'm fascinated to see what twist there is. I'm pretty sure at least 10 to 20% of this movie hasn't leaked. Janet discovered he was evil via a neutral connection. He has a ship. After confronting him and confirming his nature, she destroyed the equipment that made his ship work and trapped them both deeper in the quantum realm. Kang has been the conqueror ever since. He's been looking for Janet for revenge. Kang tells Scott he's beaten the Avengers several times. But which Kang? Which Kang beat them? Kang's beat literally every variation of the Avengers from every multiverse. Because with the multiversal travel ship, he can go forwards, he can go back, he can rewrite history, he can break history, he can rewrite everything. Pretty badass villain. Kang asks if he is the one with a hammer. And Scott makes a joke about people confusing him with Thor all the time. I'm really looking forward to this scene. And from what I've heard, we could get flashback scenes where we actually see Jonathan Major's variation of Kang killing these Avengers. That would be so amazing if they actually do that. I don't think they will, but we can only hope. He wants Scott to help him get out of the quantum realm and says they should work together. Kang claims to be the only one who can stop what is coming. When Scott asks what is coming, Kang simply says, me. That's interesting because as we know, there will be many variations of Kang We'll get into that a little bit later in this narration. He, being Kang, is not blue, but has lines on his face. That is interesting. We also found out recently, based on some information and a trailer that came out, we actually get to see the technology. You can see the gloves light up, showing the villain's advanced technology, so it cannot be mistaken for superpowers or magic. It's just advanced technology, and that kind of squashes the argument that it's going to be Tony Stark tech. It's well ahead of Tony Stark's level. It is futuristic technology from what we presume, and yes, I do presume by the end of Secret Wars, Tony Stark will be making some variation of an appearance. Kang's technology will put the Wakandians' technology and Tony Stark's technology to freaking shame. And this can be confirmed and verified by most recent TV spots. Scott goes into the Quantum Nexus where he meets several versions of himself. Again, we've seen this in trailers. There's a Scott who just has a Baskin Robbins employees in the universe and doesn't understand what the freaking hell is going on. Scott works with his multiversal self against Modoc. Scott has an emotional moment with Cassie saying he messed up a lot in his life, but she was the only good thing. He, he never messed up. He promises Cassie he'd get her home. Corey Stalls is doing a voice for Modoc. There's a running joke about everyone calling Modoc Darren. Why? Because he hates it. Now, this was one of the pinnacle parts that came out in the trailer leading up to the movie release later this month. Janet calls him. Nathan, aka Nathaniel Richards, who is really Kang, but I presume Marvel will just keep calling him Kang for the normies. Kang tells Janet that she gave him a lot of time to plot his revenge by leaving him stranded in the quantum realm. He tells her that when he leaves, the first universe he claim will be hers, which is the main Earth in the MCU. And this actually does tie into a lot of the stuff we've seen in the most recent TV spots. Kang 
reveals he's built an army and says he'll take it with him to conquer the universe. Scott gets an all-black suit. Nah, I don't know if that part's real. Hope has lightsaber-like wings. Both black suits have red and yellow ascents, respectively. The final battle is huge and reminds me of the battle from Aquaman with all the moving parts. Now, something here, which it kind of doesn't really go into, go into detail, is what actually happens? What is it he's got to steal? For some reason, Marvel's kind of keeping that a secret. But based on doing even more digging, this is kind of what happens. There's a core of the multiversal engine, an energy source that can take you to any location in time and space. That essentially is what Kang, the freaking conqueror, wants to get his hands on. And to do that, they need to go through essentially go to the quantum nexus and that is where the mystery will be solved and for some reason it's kind of annoying me that marvel won't just give it a name because it can't just be the energy source i'm sure marvel comic readers will know exactly what this will be there's lots of theories out there what it will actually physically be because we know it's just an energy source so kang can go forwards backwards sideways but that essentially is the plot when he keeps saying there's something you need to steal, only you can do it, it's because of the pin particles. That's the reason why he keeps saying, only you can do it, Scott. You're so special, Scott, that only you can do it. Now, a lot of this has already been confirmed, but we have the premiere coming up recently and it will be confirmed there. Essentially, it will be some kind of power source and Scott can use the pin particles to shrink it. It will be some variation of the comic book variation of this the core of the multiversal engine, an energy source that can take you anywhere, any location. That is what they're looking for. It could be an actual reference or I guess the heart of forever. And he could do some variation of shrinking it into the forever crystal. I'm sure if you've read the comics, you know what I'm on about here. It's essentially just an energy source that will get Kang absolutely anywhere he wants to go, whether that be back, whether that be forwards. It is pretty darn interesting. It really is. Now, Let's digress even more into this storyline that is Ant-Man 3. We see Giant Cassie fighting Modok. She tries to talk him into switching sides. Giant Scott and Giant Cassie running in into each other for a hug. He jokes about it feeling like he's hugging a Godzilla. Hence why I said there will be comedic value all the way through, but not on the level of anything else we've seen before, which is good. Kang has a standoff with Scott and Hope and Cassie. Hank flies in with illusion of battle-armored ants. They attack Kang. He manages to hold him off with his powers. Modok also shows up to help. Kang's fatally injures Modok. The family goes to Modok's side as he dies. He rubs his tiny hand on Scott's cheek. There's an emotional moment where Modok says Cassie was right about him. And that at least he died in Avenger and Scott says he did a good job and agrees. Now there is some inconsistencies with the next leak that's recently come out, which we're going to go over in a little bit. Kang survived the fight and Scott stops just as they're all about to go back to their universe. Janet, Hank, Cassie and Hope escape. Kang beats the living out of Scott. Believe that word. Hope comes back for him. They also managed to trap Kang in the quantum realm, but he escapes and traps Scott inside this is kind of obvious because the next movie is called kang's dynasty or oh, sorry why do people get triggered when i just call it kang's dynasty avengers the kang's dynasty there isn't really much difference because there is no avengers at the moment so you knew kang was going to get out because he's been trapped in said quantum realm presumably by the other variants of kang because for some reason it's alleged that this kang is the strongest smartest most deadliest variation of Kang? Or was it he who remains that threw in there? We don't actually specifically know the real reason of how he got there. Hank guarantees Janet and Cassie that they're fine them. At the end of the movie, Hope and Scott look out at the quantum realm. Hope says to Scott that their family will be okay and they have to trust the duo. She says Cassie will know what to do. The next scene, sometime later, Cassie running all kind of programs on a different computer. She's staring at the screen see something her eyes go wide and she gasps and cut to black now this is where it's alleged that it is going to be the avengers fail safe essentially vision made some kind of team that would be triggered if the avengers died or some variants of that or if there was no one left to defend her so this is the way the movie was supposed to end but as we know movies especially with marvel 
always do secret reshoots, retooling, and things like that. So recently, a new ending of the movie came out and new post credit scenes that somewhat contradicts the end of that plot leak. So like I said, 70, 80% of that movie will definitely be real. And this is coming from a pretty good source. A lot of other content creators have covered this. A lot of respectable people, if you like, in the community somewhat believe this. But you do have to take it with a massive pinch of salt because it can't be confirmed, verified until the world premiere has happened. And then what will happen is we will know it's confirm that this is all real but we we already know it's all real it's just a case of what parts are a little bit out of whack what parts aren't fully consistent so let's go over the new information here modok darren dies after a change of heart because cassie calls him a d i c k yeah youtube's getting very strict with with profanity and swear words so i'd rather not swear but you know what i'm saying so darren dies modok dies I don't think Modok's going to die at all. I really don't. I think they've got big plans for him. So, at the end of the film, Kang the Conqueror is potentially killed. Now, this word has confused people. What do you mean potentially killed? Well, he said, have I killed you? Which Avengers are you? I've killed the Avengers hundreds of times. Kang can't really die because he can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's lots of very You can't really kill Kang. So that's probably why the word in this says potentially. After being kicked into his ship, the multiversal engine by Hope, whilst it's collapsing due to Scott hitting it with pin particles. Now, I don't disagree that he dies. I'm just saying Kang the Conqueror will reappear even if he did die. Cassie rescues Scott and Hope from being stranded in the quantum realm. So the other plot leak that most people have thought to be right for literal months says that the movie ends with Ant-Man and Hope being stuck in there. But this one says that Cassie comes along moments later and rescues them. I mean, either way, we know Ant-Man will be involved with the narrative with the Avengers going forward. So either way, he's going to get out pretty fast. Scott is happy, but begins to have a crisis after remembering that Kang had said something bad was coming and everyone would die if he didn't get out the quantum realm. That's when they had a somewhat plan. Kang said to Janet, when I get out, I'm going to destroy your freaking Earth. But Kang's potentially died in this movie, but there's lots of different variants of Kang. We've already seen He Who Remains. We know due to Loki Season 2, there's so many more Kangs coming. So the next bit is an absolute game changer, and we know it could be somewhat true based on what was shown. I believe it was either D23 or Comic-Con. Either way, it's leaked online. The trailer for Loki Season 2 does actually show a scene where there's multiple variations. In this statue, there's three statues of Jonathan Majors, essentially his head, but with slightly tweaked, slightly different looks. And these could be different variations of Kangs like Immortus, like Ramatut, like Scarlet Sanctorium, etc. So this, this slides into the DMs with the first post credit scene. So, the Council of Kangs gather discussing how the Kang they exiled has been killed. So according to this, the Council of Kangs threw Kang, into the, Quant Kang the Conqueror into the Quantum Realm, and it wasn't he who remains. The Council is led by Immortus, and includes Romadop, possibly a version of Scarlet Centurion. However, they are not red dots. They are not happy that their exiled variant was killed by others and vowed to stop them. Our heroes who have started meddling in the multiverse as they may kill everything they've built. Interconnection timelines. They call upon all the Kangs for support in preparation for a dastardly plan. The scene ends in a Colosseum full of Kangs variants, including a scroll version. Now, like I said, if you go to Loki Season 2 trailer, it's leaked somewhere on YouTube. I may put a picture over, but you know, you know what YouTube's like, so I may not. But there is a scene where Loki is looking terrified at three different variations of the actor Jonathan Majors' face. Now, it's really hard to make out who they are, but let's just say they are variations of Kang. So... I somewhat do believe this. And as I said before, I was told about a scene that linked up to Loki would be one of the real post credit scenes. But I said I wouldn't actually say anything unless it came out. And as I said in the previous video, or the video before that, I was told something about Loki. So I do really believe that that could be one of the post credit scenes. But it doesn't really play with the 
initial post credit scenes that was said. But as we know with movies, there's always multiple different endings, so no one actually knows what the ending of the movie really will be. So the second post credit scene is essentially a Loki scene, but it does tie in with the Council of Kang scenes in a roundabout way. And it does tie in with the information that's got out about multiple variances of Kang appearing in Loki season two, and also the time zone they're going to be in also ties in with that. Because as we know, the actor Jonathan Majors Kang should be appearing in literally every project going forward. We see a stage and then Victor Timely, another Kang, as he is making a presentation to an audience. He has his classic mustache. The set looks like it's set in the 30s or 40s. In the crowd, watching Victor on stage is Loki looking terrified. I mean, I love Tom Hiddleston, but but can we stop getting him to do the terrified look? I mean, I've, I've seen him live in a play in London, ironically with Charlie Cox, who plays Daredevil. But can we stop getting Loki to do the terrified look? He's got so much more range than that. And Mobius looking confused. So Loki season one ended with what we perceive as our Loki from the earlier version in the Avengers and Endgame coming back to a diff slightly different time zone and trying to warn everyone about Kang the Conqueror but no one knowing about it because Loki actually ended up back at a different time zone. So it all does line up. Yeah, sure, bro. It could all be made up, but it literally all lines up. And if this is true, it really does change the freaking game because the Council of Kangs are coming and we are going to see lots of different variances of Kang this early on in a post credit scene for Ant-Man 3 and we've not re and there's a few years gap in be in between the Kang's Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars which is now going to be split into two movies which makes a lot more sense I mean I think Kang's Dynasty really should be split as well but before we get to Kang's Dynasty we actually need an Avengers team and this is where Captain America the new Captain America movie comes out where they'll be building a team there. The Young Avengers will be being built up. There's going to be characters like Shun Shi. There'll be characters like Shu Hulk, etc. Yeah, I know we don't have the OG Iron Man or the OG Captain America, but whatever the new team is, they're going to have to get stuck in like Jeff Loveness said. That would be the case. So we know that's going to happen, but this is going to be a very different Kang to the comic books because too much time travel in Endgame has kind of ruined the time traveling aspect. For the Kang story, according to the writer, of the movie himself. So we're going to have to have a human version of Kang because Kang essentially is human. He's just using really advanced technology, hence how he can do all the voodoo crazy stuff he can do. And that's been shown in a recent TV spot. It makes it clear that he's not magical. He's not got superpowers. It's literally the technology he's using. And it's almost like in the most recent trailers, TV spots, they're trying to display Kang's telekinesis powers. The fact he's an absolute freaking savage, but it's coming from technology. He's not a, he is a super villain, but he's not actually a villain in the sense that he's got powers or it's magic. It's literally technology that will blow Tony Stark tech out of the water and that will blow Wakandian technology out of the water altogether. So within this video, we've essentially gone over the full plot for Ant-Man 3 and we've also gone over both post credit scenes and how it ends and how it ties up to Avengers 5 aka Avengers the Kang's Dynasty and how it lines up to Loki season 2. Yes there might be like I said 10 to 20 percent that hasn't been covered but as I say doing these kind of plot leak videos and covering plot leaks you never get the full story you get most of the story but you never get the full story. So it's all about the energy source. They all want to get the energy source so Kang can get out. An energy source that caused the multiversal engine, which they're calling Kang's time chair. An energy source that can take you to any location in time and space. And that is what Kang is going to ask Scott Lang to help him steal. He's like, when I'm going to steal, I usually have to know what I'm going to steal. You'll know it when you see it. Try to travel there as fast as possible and get out as fast as possible. The longer you're inside, the more your mind will degenerate. Better hurry up, Dad. Don't screw it up. So this movie will be pretty darn cool. It will be a pretty game-changing movie. I really hope both the post credit scenes are real because Jonathan Majors is going to be showing major range because he is playing all these other variations of Kang, essentially. So we could see four different Jonathan Majors at the same time talking to each other 
on the same screen. That's going to be freaking insane when we do see it. So like always, check us out on Instagram. That was you. Check us out on Twitter. OSUG. More importantly, like the video, comment down below to help the video get out there. I haven't actually ruined anything for you because you would have had to click in this video yourself in order to see said video. So if you have made it this far, please comment. It will help the video get pushed out and it will show your freaking appreciation for the content. So like always, guys, I will catch you in another video very soon. Catch you later.